uh, Youth Alive was established in 1993 by a very noble lady called Sister Dr. Miriam Duggan. At the time, she was the medical superintendent of Nsambia Hospital, and she saw an increasing number of young people occupying hospital beds, ailing with the HIV virus. Most of them regretting that they didn't live long enough to fulfill their future dreams and ambitions. In a response, she decided to start a pressure group that will help young people prevent HIV AIDS, live long enough to live fulfilling and rewarding lives. And that's how Youth Alive started humbly in Kamocha, uh, Kamocha Parish, before spreading out to 17 other countries in Africa. When we began, we were addressing issues of health. At the time, health was the biggest issue for young people. We needed young people to stay alive. But as uh, time went on, we realized that young people were faced with different challenges. And the current challenge that we are addressing is the challenge of lack of employment and lack of uh, income and livelihoods for these young people, which lead them again in um, very risky lifestyles. And what Youth Alive has done is to address that challenge head on. This is what we do with young people. We help them and form them into groups and these self-help groups, we take them through our model program called Education for Life. Education for Life prepares their minds and, and um, there is paradigm shift, there is a shift of attitude. They, take, they can do things which they didn't think they can do. We talk to them about what their life was about and we lead them to draw a picture of their lives, which is the power of vision, where they want to be 20 years from now. And that power of vision is the anchor of which we help them start establishing steps to achieve those dreams. My name is Akolo Kengronal. I'm from uh, a group called Myanmar, which was in cohort two. Uh, my youth code was one. I got the training from Youth Alive Uganda from the facilitator called Okulu Hamros of which the topic he taught me, which I liked most, was vision. Now, when he taught me about vision, I start dreaming of myself, how can I plan, how can I have the vision for me to be better tomorrow. So the training really helped a lot because it made us put goals ahead. And now I can now, I am now on for my drivings after the trainings. And uh, those kinds of mechanics, I hope, with the trainings, I'm going to make it because uh, I can now see I've started well and I'm now pushing on. So I believe I can make it. In these self-help groups, we help young people to acquire skills, practical skills, whether it is hairdressing, whether it's carpentry, whether it's uh, motor vehicle engineering, whether it is uh, mobile phone uh, mechanics. We help them acquire other skills along the agricultural value chains and also help them to access markets. With these self-help groups, we help them start cooperatives. And these cooperatives help them, uh, especially for those in the agricultural value chain, to batch their producers together and access the market with bulk instead of in, uh, accessing the market as individuals. Ejinyo Rich Pseldering Seeker, Zinia Mirichang of Nonga, Bokuanka, and Steven Zara and Tina Chokria, Konkakuna Jidam, Rich Pskana Tanka Kuz Seeker, Tim Steven Zara, Ninfonetio Kuria, Naran Rodim Sasuraho, Nanox Seven Vida Vida Bumazrem, Ninfonaya Vacastom and Sivayo, Avem Tuar on Kaviri, Bumanes Cheka, Omutuaro, Infonazo Sasuran Road. We also help young people to be 
work ready. Many young people might have the skills but they are not work ready. We help them attain the skills that can make them attractive to employers. Keeping time, being honest, having planners and delivering on their word. And through these trainings, many of these young people have been given apprenticeships in either uh, telecom companies, have been given apprenticeships in other service companies, whether uh, hot hotel or whether tourism companies. And by this, making them work ready, they also are able to get an income, which income can impact on their livelihoods and impact on their families. Bera nyo ne mba tumesa kuruwa nge nganze, ngerije natandikamu, okubanga solo, okubanga achivizo, okubanga nange solo, okubanga amba tumesa. Mba buri ida, ne mba buri ida ngerije tumutu ja solo, okubera mune wabanga asomye, ebi intubi nonga aliwaka, okusubolo kwa achivingamu, ntito solo la kusula anjala, ngo hize bie mviri, ngo solo kubangu wano wabatu koze saruni, na ngo liwe waka, choko la chichiko la chichi, chichi kutunda, Chovolaba, mbawanyo encouragement. Nimba anga mbabu ulida, nimba anga baigira kunze. Nini wazawa ayusa raivu, okuishirizo chilote chanya chinabe ni ndoza nkanyo kumutu, hati nanya ayi indi, inka wasa kurare nzara, mwebale, kilini mwaka webale, kuwanga hotari, hani njira kajesa kantari inti. Mwebale vyona, emutu koridi. The, my vision was to have one acre of rice. So this one acre of rice is what I have now. So from the training that I got from Yusalai Uganda, I'm very happy because I'm getting what, uh, what I have in front of me. Because of the visioning training, um, I can now support the family. I can now support my younger sisters at school. They are now in secondary schools. So I can now plan for their studies, I can support them. Young people are the future of this country and we need to prepare them to anchor the economy of this country. Private sector needs to have confidence in young people. And therefore, for us, our, our, um, our next step is to get, um, uh, to have a system where private sector come together and we link them to the young people that are willing and ready to provide a service or to provide a product. But then also we need to move young people into artificial intelligence to rely on te new technologies in production, in accessing markets, in accessing inputs, and also in providing services. That's where the future lies for this country, but particularly for youth alive in helping young people improve their livelihoods.